Hi, welcome to my little video about how to get the most out of vocal recording at home. Um, so this will work really well if you're sent backing tracks by somebody and you want to record a vocal and send it back to them. Um, this is my advice for how to do that as effectively and hopefully cheaply as possible. Okay, so there's going to be five things we're going to look at. Uh, the first is the microphone, second is the software, the third is the sort of environment that you're recording in. Um, the fourth is the actual process of doing it. And then the fifth is how you export something to send back. Um, so first things first, the microphone. Um, probably the most convenient and easy way of doing this is to use a USB microphone, um, a USB condenser microphone to be more specific. Um, I'm using a condenser microphone here. Um, they're usually bigger looking microphones, um, well at least ones that are good for this job anyway. Uh, there are many uh, for, of all different prices available. If you go on Amazon and search for USB condenser microphone, um, you'll find millions of them. Um, my recommendations, uh, the lower end of the scale would be one by a company called Newer, or Niua, I'm not sure how you pronounce their name. Um, I've bought stuff from them before and it's generally pretty good um, and very low budget. There's a model here um, that comes with a whole desk clamp mount thing and a pop shield. I'm going to talk more about pop filters, pop shields in a minute. Um, if you've got a bit more budget, then I could heartily recommend Rode microphones. Um, this one's a Rode USB. As you can see, it's quite a lot more. But if there's something that you're going to be doing a lot of um, and you really care about the sound of your voice and how it would record, it's worth spending the money. Um, this potentially is the only outlay that you're going to have to spend. Um, well, the bulk of it anyway. So it's worth really weighing up what you can manage to afford. Um, on top of the microphones, some of them, are like the newer one, it came with a desk mount. Um, but of course, if you buy one that doesn't have that, you're going to need a stand. Some of them come with um, like little desk mounts, uh, like the Rode one, that then probably not going to be very useful because most singers prefer to sing standing up. So you really need something that can uh, raise the microphone to a good height. Um, here's an example of a boom microphone stand, which would be perfectly fine and would work with any condenser mic that you buy. Um, you will also, as I mentioned earlier, need a pop filter. Uh, this basically prevents um, pops or plosive consonants like p and b causing the mic to overload. Um, here's one I'm using. You probably can't see it very well. Um, here's one on Amazon. Ridiculously cheap, um, but an essential piece of equipment. You can make them out of a wire coat hanger and a pair of stockings, but really with the price of them nowadays, what's the point of faffing about? Um, like I said the earlier, uh, the newer package had um, all those things with it. So you just need to find out what you're going to get with your microphone and make sure you have everything you need. Um, you don't need a cable because these microphones come with USB cables attached. Um, so yeah, that's all you need. Um, I've been showing you stuff on Amazon. There are many other good music outlets, um, more specialised, and they might give you advice or they might have more variety or more um, variety of the higher cost stuff. Uh, good websites are GAK, G-A-K, um, based in Brighton, I believe. They're really good. Um, Anderton's is a good shop as well. I bought stuff from them. DV247. Um, and there's also a German shop called Tomann.de. Uh, the shipping obviously takes a little bit longer and you tend to have to pay more for shipping, but their prices are often very competitive. So it could be if you find a mic that you think you want, shop around, have a look on all the sites. The prices all vary. Um, sometimes you get deals on different sites, so it's worth shopping around a bit, seeing what you can get for your money. Okay, that deals with the microphone. Let's assume you've bought, ordered and installed your microphone on your computer. Um, next thing we need to look at is software. So there are a couple of free options. Um, if you're using a Mac, um, the obvious free option would be GarageBand or GarageBand, uh, which is uh, free from the App Store. You can just download it from the Apple App Store. Um, it's very easy to use uh, and you can do all sorts of things with it. You'll be able to make your own music with it and it's free. <laughs> um, 
Also, if you're on a PC, probably the best free option is Audacity, which lots of people may have used already. Um, it's basically a sort of simple audio editor, but you can do um, recording in it. And even better, you can record overdubs, which is what we're talking about doing, taking an existing track and recording something in addition to it and being able to separate the two afterwards. Uh, that's basically what we're doing. And Audacity will do that. Um, later on in this video, uh, at the very end of this video, there'll be an eight minute or so um, tutorial on how to do it in Audacity, how to import a backing track, record a vocal, save it. But I'll come on to that. Um, next thing we need to look at is the recording environment itself. Uh, so once you've downloaded your software and installed it on your Mac or your PC, your laptop, whichever, whatever it is, um, and plugged in your microphone, you now need to think about how you're actually going to physically record yourself. This is the thing that most people overlook or get wrong or do badly. Even if you've got a very low price microphone and you're using free software, you can still get a really good sounding vocal if you know what to do in the space that you're recording in. because. That is make or break. Um, ideally, you'd have access to a brilliant recorded recording studio, which is really well acoustically treated, but most of us don't have that. Um, so we need to look at cheap alternatives, ways that we can like get the principles of a recording studio and bring them into our homes. Um, so the first thing is, where do I record? Well, the best place would be somewhere where there's a lot of soft furnishings, um, curtains, cushions, sofas, duvets, anything that's soft will absorb sound waves, which is good because we don't want reflections. So the worst place to record would be a bathroom or a kitchen where there's a lot of flat, sheer surfaces um, that will reflect, reflect sound waves and create unwanted room sound. So we're trying to get rid of room sound. This room that I'm in at the moment, you can see there are panels on the wall behind me. Um, I've made those with rock wool and timber frames and all that stuff. And that basically absorbs sound waves. So the room's pretty dead. Um, but you don't have those necessarily in your house. So anything that will do that job. Um, bedrooms are usually good because there will be a big bed with a duvet cover on it and some pillows and carpet on the floor probably and rugs um, and cur curtains and things like that. Um, there would even be clothes in your wardrobe which you could get out of the wardrobe and hang on the outside doors of the wardrobe so they kind of stop the wardrobe doors being reflective. Draw the curtains, um, obviously put the lights on um, and bring in anything you've got in the house. You might have some a bean bag or some big floor cushions, things like that. Just bring them from anywhere else in the house. Other duvets, if you've got a spare room or other members of your family, steal their duvets, hang them over the door um, or get a clothes rail or anything that you can hang um, duvet covers on. I've seen people make tents out of duvet covers and mic stands and basically go inside and sing inside that. Totally works. Anything you can do. Ideally, you'd be in a room surrounded by soft material. Um, so that's something you need to consider. Uh, a small room isn't necessarily good because uh, that means just the reflections are shorter because the walls are nearer. Um, and in some ways, if the walls are further away from the microphone, um, then that's better. So maybe a bigger room with more sound dampening material in um, would be better than a small room. Um, with that in mind, your position in the room is important and being fairly central is is the best thing you can do. Try not to be in a corner or near the wall or near a window or anything like that. Try and be as far away from any surfaces as you can be. And the best place for that is bang in the middle. Standing up is usually best. Singers usually perform better when they're standing. Um, get your pop shield ready. Uh, make sure you've got your headphones and your laptop. Maybe don't have the laptop too near the mic because the laptop will make a bit of hiss. So having it a little bit further away from the microphone will mean it doesn't get picked up with your vocal. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do. Make sure you're comfortable. Maybe have a chair so you can sit down in between takes to take a minute and have a breather. Um, number four then is the process. Um, so like I said, I'm going to put a little tutorial about Audacity at the end of this video, and that's basically going to show you the process. So even if you're using GarageBand or some other software, it might be worth watching my Audacity tutorial because 
It's basically going to show you the same principles. Most software, we call it a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, um, like GarageBand, Audacity, Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, all those software, they all do very much the same kind of thing. Um, so what I'm going to show you later in the Audacity video will help you to understand the principle. But I'll just talk you through it here now. The main thing we want to do, or the first thing that we want to do, is um, create a new project in your software and import the backing track that you've been sent. Um, and that brings in the WAV file, or whatever type of audio file it is, into the software so that you can play the track and listen to it. Um, once you've got that there, you'll need to make um, a new track to record your vocal on. And ideally, depending on the software, but I think most audio software will allow you to do this, you want to create a mono audio track, not a stereo one. If you have, can see an option in your software to switch between stereo and mono, it's mono that we want because we have one microphone, mono is one channel, that is how um, a mix engineer is going to want to receive your vocal. It's a mono audio track. So create yourself a mono audio track. However your software allows you to choose what your input is going to be, you'll be choosing your USB microphone as the input. Um, that tells the software what sound, where the sound is coming from that's going to be recorded on that mono track. So different software has different ways of doing it. You'll see later on how to do it in Audacity. Then you need to check the level of your microphone. So you'll probably have to Different software works in different ways, but usually the track you're going to record on, the new audio track you've created, you're going to put it into um, record ready mode or you're going to arm it so that it's ready to record. And that way you'll be able to monitor your microphone. You should see somewhere there'll be a little level meter and the uh, microphone level will be visible when you're speaking. You'll be able to see the level going up and you need to adjust that level. Um, again, different software, different microphones will have different ways of doing that. Some of these microphones have little controls on them to adjust the input gain or the input level. And that's what you would adjust to make sure that your um, voice is going to be at a good level. Sometimes it'll be in the software, like in Audacity, there's a control at the top. Um, Basically, whatever software you're using and whatever system, you want the level to be getting up to about three quarters of the way when you sing the loudest part of the song. If it goes above that, there's a risk that it will clip or distort, and we do not want that to happen. So set your input level, however that works, to a point where it's about three quarters of the way up the level meter. And when you're singing quieter, it'll obviously be lower, that's fine, um, but you want it to get up there to about three quarters five sixths of the way up the level meter when you're when you're going for it so it's a good way to check the level is to sing the loudest part of the song um at this point you'll make sure you have headphones on because um you can't have the music coming out of the speakers otherwise it'll get picked up on the microphone put your headphones on make sure the level is good so that you can hear the backing track um you need to be able to hear your voice um some most people find it easier to put one headphone um, behind your ear that allows you to hear your voice in the room um, as well like so so you put the headphones on and then you just move one of them behind your ear like that um, so now I can hear my voice in the room but I'll also be able to hear the music in that ear um, that's the best way of doing it uh, also make sure you've got your pop shield on um, position wise you want to be about a foot away from your microphone um, maybe a little more depending on how good your acoustics are in the room. If it's very reflective and you haven't been able to dampen the room, be a little bit closer. Um, trouble is if you go too close, you're more likely to get pops and you're more likely to get sibilance where the S's distort. So just being a foot or maybe 18 inches away from the mic, you're gonna get a more even sound without those unwanted bits. And then the pop shield just basically goes in between you and the mic. So that'll stop any of those plosives, or hopefully stop those plosives. Um, obviously, you're going to move around a bit if you're a human. Um, ideally, don't move around too much. Um, some singers move away when they get loud from the microphone. It's kind of good, but you don't. it's more of a live performance thing that you don't need to do that so much when you're recording. As what happens if you move away, you'll end up with more room sound for those bits. And then when you go closer, you'll lose the room sound. And that's not so good. Um, when you record, you'll see the level will go up and down when you've recorded. Um, the loud bits will be very loud, much louder and the quiet bits will be much quieter. It's fine. Um, a mix engineer will be able to sort that out afterwards. Um, away you go. Then you record 
Um, at the end of your recording, you might want to do another take, make another track, do a whole other take. Um, usually in DAW's software, you can like mute, switch off the track that you've recorded so that you can record another one. Um, you might want to comp the vocal. I'll show you more about doing that in the uh, Audacity bit at the end. Um, once you're happy with your vocal, um, or vocals, because you might want to send a couple of takes to the person who's going to mix it. Um, what you need to do is export that vocal on its own. So you'll have to put the track into solo mode. Every DAW will have solo mode on each track. It'll be a little S button on the track. So you click on the S and that should switch off the other tracks. And that means when you play your track, all you'll hear is your vocal on its own which is lovely to listen to. Um, and then you probably will need to, depending on the software, set um, locator ranges or a range around your entire track to show that this is what you want to export, the entire length of the song. And when you do this, do it right from the beginning, right from the very beginning of the backing track, um, even though the backing track is muted, um, but use that as like your mar beginning marker, because that way, when the person who's mixing it receives the tracks, they'll know that, their, that the vocal track is going to come into their software, they'll probably be using something different, Cubase or Pro Tools or whatever, they can line up the beginning of your vocal export with the beginning of the backing track, and they'll know that it's going to match up and be in time. So always export the entire length from the very beginning. Um, so you've soloed it, you've set your range to export, then generally it'll be in the file menu, um, there'll be an export option. Um, there'll probably be a little dialogue window when you go to the export audio or export wave, wave or audio wave or whatever it is um, called in your software. When you get into that dialogue, what you want to try and export is a mono file. Again, like when we made a mono track, you need to make a mono export. Um, if you can't do that, it's not the end of the world, but in an ideal world, that's what you will do. Um, it's usually going to be 16-bit, it might be 24-bit, doesn't really matter. Either one of those is fine. 44.1 um, kilohertz or 44,100 kilohertz is pretty standard, it's what I use. Um, again, it doesn't really matter if you choose one of the other options. And we definitely want either a WAV file if you're on a PC or an AIF if you're on a Mac. Um, either or, they both work on both. They are full quality audio files. If you send as an MP3, it's not such good quality. MP3s are not good quality. They are small files that we use on the internet. Um, but for professional recording, you want to use WAV or AIF. So that's where you're going to export it. Make sure you name it. Be aware of where you're exporting it to. There'll be an option in the export page of your software um, to make sure you send it somewhere, maybe the desktop of your computer so it's easy to find or into a special folder and do it. It might not happen instantaneously. It might take a few seconds or even up to a minute to export your vocal. Um, if you've done multiple takes, e export each one separately as separate mono WAV or AIF files. And then you can send them. That's it. Those are the five steps. So now I'm going to switch over to um, screenshot mode or screen capture and show you um, the process of recording and exporting in Audacity, which, like I say, may be useful to watch um, so that you can adapt that to whatever software you're using, because they're all very similar, use different terms sometimes, but the principle is the same. So enjoy. OK, so you've opened up Audacity. The first thing that you want to do is to save your project. Um, when you record uh, audio in a DAW like Audacity or GarageBand, every time you record something new, it makes a new uh, WAV file or a new audio file, and that can get very messy. So if you make a project and save it in its own folder, first of all, that will just keep everything in that same folder and it's just good file management. Um, otherwise, you'll just end up with like random Audacity files all over your hard drive in different places. So, um, yeah, you go to File, Save Project, As, and yeah, whatever. Um, and then you're going to find somewhere to save it um, that's good. So you might have a documents folder. Um, in my case, I've got a second drive um, and I've got a folder on the go for this recording vocals at home. So I'm going to make a new folder there and call it Audacity Demo. 
and that's what I'm going to call the project, or das to demo. So that saves this entire project into one folder and any audio files that get recorded will also go in there um, and be managed by Audacity. Um, the next thing you need to do is to point Audacity towards your microphone to say that you're going to be recording with your mic and to record in mono. And to do that you use these sections here, um, just underneath the main buttons at the top there. Uh, I'm going to change this at the moment, it comes up by default as a stereo recording channel. Um, but I'm going to change it to mono because we have one microphone which is mono. Um, then over here you should find in this list your USB microphone, provided that you've installed it properly. Um, I don't have a USB microphone, so I'm going to choose uh, that because that's my equivalent. Um, over here is the output. This is how you're going to hear stuff that in Audacity, and that should automatically be set up as your... Um, it'll either be your built-in audio um, device on your laptop or desktop computer or it might be your USB mic if that has its own separate headphone monitoring system. Um, you'll just have to experiment to find out what you choose here so that you can actually hear what you're doing. Um, a good thing to do at this point before we even start thinking about recording is at the top we've got this level meter which shows us how loud our microphone is set um, at any given point um, and to activate that you click on the little microphone here and say start monitoring and immediately you can see input level and that looks pretty good to me. If it was too loud you can turn down the recording volume over here to record at a lower level. Um, hopefully it'll be about right by default, um, but that's where you control your recording level. Okay, so we are kind of effectively ready to record, but we need a backing track, um, something that you may have been sent um, that you're going to sing along to. So to get your backing track in, you just go File, Import, Audio, and then just browse you know, through your computer to find wherever it is that you've downloaded the backing track um, and import it. I'm just going to import this Starkey instrumental. So there you can see it's imported the backing track and if I press play, I think spacebar. Yeah, spacebar on the computer is play and stop or you can use these buttons up here. Um, I've just plugged some headphones in because of course whenever I play the track we could hear it coming out of the speakers and that meant that uh, the microphone was picking up the speakers and that's why we have to use headphones when we're recording um, so the microphone doesn't pick up the backing track through your speakers. Um, as, as we're playing, so now I can press play and you won't be able to, um, whoops, you won't be able to hear it picking up on the mic, but you can see the level here, this is what we're listening to, which is different from the microphone level over here. Okay, so I'm going to put this back into monitoring mode again so that we can uh, see the microphone level. Um, before we actually record, we need to make a new track to record onto, otherwise it'll get confused about where we're recording. You can see this backing track um, track is selected. It's got a yellow box around it. Um, so I, essentially it'd be trying to record on that, which isn't what we want to do. So if we click on the tracks menu, you can add a new track and we're going to add a mono track again because our microphone is mono. Um, and we can see it's automatically selected with this yellow uh, outline. Um, if we click back on that track, that one selects. Click that one, that one selects. So you need to select the track you want to record on um, before you start recording. Uh, make sure you're in the right place and we should be able to start. So in my headphones I can hear the backing track and I'm speaking into the microphone so we can see what I'm saying is being recorded. Um, and then when you're happy, you can press stop. Um, of course, at that stage, if you wanted to record another take, um, you could make another track, a new mono track, and there we go, it's you know, made a new one here. So say we wanted to record something on the next track at a particular point in the song, um, you just make sure this track that we want to record on is selected, it's gone yellow, and put the cursor where it is you want to start recording, and hit record. You'll hear anything you've done before and then you can start singing the new part and so you can record the song piece by piece.
there's all sorts of ways of doing this. There's no like fixed way. It's totally up to you. But this just gives you an example of the possibilities. So you may want to do a bit of tidying up. There may be things that you want to get rid of. So um, I'm just going to get rid of this bit here. Um, how to get rid of that. If you click on edit, go to remove special and silence audio. Or you can see there's a quick key of control L. Um, and that just clears stuff. So you'll end up with a tidier um, composite track if you've used two tracks to record on. Um, so say then you want to export this double track vocal, if you like, or two combined tracks to make your lead vocal. Um, in one chunk, you can click on solo on one of the tracks, then hold down the shift key on your keyboard, the one with the arrow pointing up, and click on solo on the next. And that means both of these are active, but you can see the backing track has kind of gone grey, it's not going to play. And that's how you want to export uh, the audio of the vocal just as like a single thing without the backing track obviously. Um, to do export then um, it's a good idea to select the entire track all the way back to the beginning. Um, make sure you go all the way back to the very start of where the backing track starts because that way it's easier for whoever's receiving this to align what you've sent them. If it starts from the exact same place as the backing track, then it's an easy um, job to align them in another DAW. Um, make sure they're soloed. Make sure the selection is happening. Uh, then we just go to File, Export Audio. And basically look where you're going to export this bit of audio to. Um, probably the desktop is as good a place as any, just so that it's there temporarily, unless you've got a folder particularly that you want to use. Um, give it a name, so I'm going to call it Lead Vocal Comp. Comp short for composite. Um, just check that says 16-bit PCM. It's kind of what we want. Um, and then click Save. It says it's going to be mixed down and exported as one mono file, which is cool because we're combining two tracks. By mixing down, it means it's going to combine them into one single file, which is great as long as there's no overlaps and that you've tidied everything up. If you're just exporting one track on its own, you won't get that message. Um, we don't need to worry about what's on this page. We just click on OK and it should have done it. So if I go to my desktop, there it is, lead vocal comp, and that's ready to send. Job done.